I love landscape photography in winter, and I'm fortunate enough to live in Canada where we have lots of nature to photograph and we get a lot of winter. In today's video, I'll show you the winter photos I took on location at Killarney Provincial Park. In this case, I want everything in focus, so I'm gonna go with F11. I'm still kind of learning this lens a little bit, so I'm not really sure uh, what its limitations are. I'll be needing to focus stack each of the different images that I take. Well, we finally made it to Killarney Park after a really just terrible snowstorm this morning and having a flat tire yesterday and all of that, but we're here now. I'm here with my dad, who passed down his love of nature to me and is one of the main reasons I'm a landscape photographer. First, we need to get our gear to the yurt and get set up for two nights, but once that's done, we can head to our first location, Granite Ridge. Well, not 50 meters into our first hike, I immediately come across this just gorgeous scene. These sort of plantation style trees planted all along and, you know, it's sort of a, a gap here. So there's this nice vanishing point. It may have been a road at some point. I don't really know. I framed up just right in the center of this location and um, hoping to get kind of a vanishing point. But I've also got a bit of bright sunlight coming in from the top. So I'm trying to kind of cut that out um, so that it doesn't sort of blow out the highlights. I actually think I might try a couple of different compositions because I may be able to just look straight down this and get all these nice little snow covered branches kind of looking out um, to, uh, to some logs at the end, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. In this case, I want everything in focus, so I'm going to go with F11, maybe even F13 or higher, but uh, no reason to uh, change my ISO and I'm letting the shutter speed be whatever it is. Um, I've just kind of come down a little bit with my exposure compensation again to get rid of some of the hot spots in the sky. So we made it up to the top of Granite Ridge and I didn't film it because frankly it was quite a slog. Look in the other direction out at Georgian Bay, very beautiful but the light is just really strange and now a snowstorm has sort of come in over the LaCloche range and uh, I think that means that uh, I'm not going to get a view of the mountains. Actually they're not visible now and they were a little while ago. But I framed up something very nice in front of me and it's all about layers. I'm gonna wait around maybe a little bit to see if the uh, sort of a part of the mountain shows up uh, and if it does then uh, then this is the shot I'm gonna get um, before we head back down and if not then we'll just head back down. So this shot is just all about these layers of trees and I don't know how visible that is. I think I'm gonna lighten it up to see if you can see a little bit more of it but just tree about 200 meters away and then another line, you know, 50 meters after that, maybe 100 meters after that, over and over and over again. They're starting to get a little more invisible with the uh, snow as it's increasing, but I kind of like that because it just sort of disappears into this, uh, this snow. Day two, we planned out a long day of hiking, ending at George Lake for a sunset shot, and if the conditions were right, some astrophotography. I am just winded walking through this. It's like six inches of snow with a um, layer underneath it that gives way underfoot. So each step is like a little bit less than it would be and a little bit harder than, uh, than it needs to be. And it's really quite painful, but I'm happy because the sun is coming out a little bit and uh, interested to see what kind of conditions we get at the end of the trail. Well we abandoned our hike. Uh, the snow was two three feet deep in places and we found it very challenging to find the trail markers and decided that it was probably better to live than to get caught out there. So we've come back to the um, main road and along that is the Chickenasing River or the Chickenasing Creek, I'm not sure. Um, but there's a couple of different swifts, a couple of waterfalls on this area. So uh, I've come as close to 
the side of one as I dare get. Um, and luckily the, uh, the clouds are just kind of, you know, opening up a little bit and the sun is peeking through. So I'm getting some nice kind of striations of light um, on my subject. I've decided to pop out the 14 millimeter because it's the widest lens that I've got here. And I want to get very wide shot of this uh, waterfall. But also I want to get very, very close to some of the uh, ice that's been forming in this waterfall. Very sort of detailed, beautiful um, little bits of, uh, of ice kind of nodules. I'm going to set my aperture to f11 because I'm hoping to get everything in focus. Um, but I will likely need to focus stack, meaning that I'm going to get one shot of my foreground and one shot of the trees in the background. I'm still kind of learning this lens a little bit. so. Not really sure uh, what its limitations are, or how I can take it, but uh, hoping to try that out today. So I'm on aperture priority mode, F11. I've taken my exposure compensation up to 0.7 because I was looking at the histogram and I just sort of saw that it was a little bit close to the bottom there and I didn't want to clip any of the darks of this river. So I brought it up a little bit, making sure not to blow up my highlights. forecast calling for partial cloud cover, I got very excited to get to my planned sunset spot. But the snow was still falling, and I was a bit skeptical. Well, the sky has indeed opened up, as the forecast predicted, which was uh, quite startling to see, actually. We started to see the first range of the La Cloche Mountains, and then we haven't really seen the second, but then there's sort of blue sky right above, and the sun setting over there is starting to light some of the clouds. I think I'm not going to get particularly lucky with light on the uh, on the range, but I'm definitely going to stick it out. We're going to stick it out. For composition, I think I'm struggling a little. And it's because there's not really any foreground interest, which is the hallmark of my wide angle shots. Well, there is foreground interest, but I'd have to get so close to this cliff edge that I would absolutely slide down it with my camera. So I'm not interested in doing that. Um, so I've just sort of gone for very wide, including a few of the trees on the side of the um, cliff that I'm on and trying to avoid getting a little bit of this um, tree behind me that's a bit wiry and not particularly nice. I think the light's probably done. This shot is not one I'm proud of. A result of poor planning, bad scouting, and meh weather. But we came back a few hours later and I took my best shot of this trip. Well, back at George Lake for some astrophotography. I've been taking a number of shots, some landscape orientation, some vertical orientation of um, this really beautiful, I think, little creek that's running down to the beach but it's making a nice little path and it's providing some very interesting subject um, foreground subject and just been taking those photos because i needed 100 percent concentration on the photo taking process so i didn't sort of set up any of the normal logging stuff that i uh, would normally get to show you but uh, let me show you what i do have very simple composition just this Beautiful little river stream, small thing going down to the uh, beach. And then just some very simple lines on the La Cloche Mountains in the background, sort of meeting little humps of rock there. And then I've not found the galactic center, but I've found some sort of Milky Way uh, piece in the middle there to uh, to frame up that which you can't see on this but you can see a little bit more of this milky way area um, on the rendered image which is very nice so with this being an astrophotography shot i have turned off all the lights of everything around me so that i'm not polluting any of the foreground with uh, different lights of microphones or sort of the camera itself just sort of turned everything down 
terms of camera settings, what I wanted to achieve is my most open aperture for this lens, that's f1.8. So I'll be needing to focus stack each of the different images that I take um, to get everything in focus. So I'm doing a very close foreground shot and then one about a meter and a half out and then just one of the stars which gets all of the, uh, the rest of this in focus. I've taken my ISO up to 3200, which is a still reasonably low noise um, ISO on this camera. It looks pretty good. Um, and with that, what I'm trying to achieve is uh, six seconds. So six seconds will give me just a small bit of motion blur in the stars, but it'll be enough that it'll sort of accentuate the brightness of the stars um, without making them look like lines that have been drawn across the sky with the movement of the earth. It's a very quiet night. There's a bit of a waterfall over there and there's some clouds on the horizon, um, but we haven't seen anybody. We don't hear anything. It's just very quiet and definitely everything muffled by the, uh, by the beautiful snow, so. If you liked this video, then you're going to love this next one.